In introducing the template that we will use to develop our curriculum units, um, this is Understanding by Design. And it is, um, it's not the only model that's out there, but it's a very popular model. Uh, it's really kind of taken education by storm because it encourages the curriculum developer to look very deeply and to incorporate uh, the very best practices in educational design. What is UBD? It's a common sense approach for unpacking curriculum standards. We'll, we'll talk more about each of these. Emphasizing students' understanding. Expanding assessment tools and repertoires. In other words, helping you look at different ways to assess and get the evidence you need. And incorporating effective instructional strategies so that uh, we actually reach those um, objectives that we have set and we reach them at a level that they were intended to be achieved. Okay, misconception alert. A misconception is when you understand something wrong. <laughs> and it's important to understand that the UBD framework is not an end in itself. It's a tool, not a goal. In other words, it's not, uh, it's learning to develop this framework is not as important as you're learning to develop curriculum that incorporates the principles that are shown in this framework. It's the teaching that's the goal. Exemplary teaching, not specifically the framework. Okay, there's three stages to the um, learning by design, and it's considered to be done in a backward design. First, you identify the desired results. In other words, what do you want the students to know and be able to do at the end of the learning experience? That should be first. You determine what you have to do to get them there, and then you plan what comes in between. Those learning experiences, which will be most effective to uh, get students to acquire the knowledge and skills that you have identified at the level of mastery that is required. Why backwards? Because even though it makes sense to plan in this way, it's not the way it's usually done. Uh, very often, educators start with activities and then figure out what they're teaching in them. And uh, are they get an assessment and say, oh, this is what they've learned. So um, it, it, it's backward only because we have tended in the past to plan curriculum in other ways. Okay, the template has three main stages. Stage one, which we will be working on today, you identify the big idea and generate the transfer objective. Uh, and we'll talk more about the big idea. You identify and unpack the standards because you have to know what it is you're trying to teach. And from the standards, you identify the knowledge and skills that the learners will acquire during the unit. And then you, this is something that is probably new to you. You will think deeply and endure by, and identify those enduring understandings and essential questions that uh, determine the lifelong learning and broader learning of the student. Stage two, you decide what evidence will be needed to show that the students have obtained the targeted knowledge and skills at the appropriate levels of mastery. In other words, how are you going to know if they learned it? And you identify ways to get that evidence, the assessment methods and instruments. And be sure to include at least one performance. Why? Because if there are skills involved, and no deep um, unit will not have skills involved, then they're going to need a performance to show those skills, to demonstrate those skills. So think about having at least one performance involved in your unit. Stage three, uh, that's when we plan the lessons. We identify the lesson activities that will accomplish the goals and objectives and provide the evidence we need to assess the learning. So those are the three stages. Don't, it's not necessary to fill it in in order. 
Uh, if you, you can start with the content standards or with the goals. If you have a key resource or activity that you really feel is important, you can go back and analyze it to see uh, what these other elements are in that activity. You can start with a big idea. Uh, you can start with a lesson that you're required to teach or that you want to teach and dig deeper to make it, um, to fill it out so that it fits these, this template. Okay, you can look for um, other ways to, examples. As I said, when I presented this in class, educators are great um, thieves. It's okay to find good ideas somewhere else and use them. We're all after the same thing, to teach the best way we can. And one of the things, uh, one of the resources that I have identified is that bottom website where they have exemplary units. I think this is a very, very good resource and worth your time to look at those units and get, um, and it will help you conceptualize what some of these elements are so that you can develop them for your own unit and own units in the future. Okay, we, I ask you to start with a big idea and we define that as the rationale for teaching what you teach. Why? Do you teach this content or these skills? What is important about them that students need to know them? Um, very often we just teach it because we've been told to teach it. But uh, this framework asks you to ask yourself, why is this important in the great scheme of things? I just picked up something that I think is a big idea in literacy is that the purpose of language is communication. It's important that we identify these big ideas because otherwise we don't help the student understand why they're studying these things and we don't always put these, uh, this knowledge and these skills in a context so that students can use them the rest of their lives. So in coming up with your big idea, ask yourself, why do we teach this? Why is it important? to teach this. Uh, big ideas have many layers and nuances. In other words, they're deep. They can be revisited uh, as the student grows in maturity. They can look at these big ideas uh, from a deeper level. And sometimes you have to really dig to understand and help the students understand what this really means. Those are the characteristics of a good big idea. Um, you can ask, uh, can, can, does everybody agree with this big idea? Are you likely to change your mind about it over the course of a lifetime? Those, uh, that, that just means it's deep and appropriate for a big idea. And if an expert looked at this unit, would it be something that they might agree with you on? I just... Uh, generated a couple. Uh, I left a big space so you can think what are some big ideas in literacy and language. Fiction is a window into truth. When you study fiction, do you ever ask why you teach students about fiction? Our language is for communication between people. When you're teaching um, idiomatic expressions, vocabulary, dialogue, why? Why do they need to know that? Because they're the bridges to human relationships. So these are the kinds of things that make big ideas. You've got to go below the surface to uncover the really big ideas. You've got to think deeply. Okay, we've got the big ideas. We go from the big ideas to the transfer goal. And the transfer goal means what... Uh, Transfer in this case means that we are, the students are able to take what we teach them in the classroom and transfer it to real life. In other words, they can use it. It's not just classroom knowledge. They can use it in their real lives. That's what educational transfer really means. So, for example, you might say, uh, the transfer goal in one of your templates is, is stated like this. I want my students to learn something so that in the long run, on their own, they can 
do something. For example, I want my students to learn how to effectively use language in social situations so that in the long run and on their own, they can communicate with the different people they meet in life. So we're looking at that big idea and saying what we want our students to, how we want them to use what we're teaching them the rest of their lives. You can state big ideas in different ways. Uh, for example, the way we stated that last one, you might say, students will have the language, vocabulary, and skills to communicate with the different people they meet in life. Okay, stages of design. We're working today on number one, identifying the desired results. Um, we are going to identify the standards that are going to be taught in that unit. Now the standards are things that your, um, in your country, they've been identified as the knowledge and skills students need as they mature and uh, at each level of their educational life. They should be at a certain point. If they don't, they're not going to end up with an education that is appropriate uh, in, in this community, in this, in this country. And so we want to use those standards. We want to look at them. Now, you're going to look, design a unit for one to two weeks. You're going to use more than one standard. You, there's too many standards. You can't take two weeks to use one standard. And when you look at the standards, you can see that you're teaching more than that. You're teaching often the skills together, the domains. You're often teaching not only, for example, verb tenses, but you're also teaching vocabulary. You're also teaching writing skills and speaking skills. So pull those in. A good unit will have anywhere from I don't know, three to seven or more standards because you're teaching lots of skills and lots of knowledge within a, a single unit. And so be familiar with those standards and find the ones that you're going to make sure you in, include in this teaching block of time. Uh, you identify the, the big idea, why are you teaching this? And you translate that into a transfer goal, as we talked about. And then we look at the essential understanding, enduring understandings, the essential questions, and the knowledge and skills that we want students to acquire. These elements make up stage one of the design. Okay, uh, the template, the learning by design template, uh, that's on your website looks something like this. Notice over here, right here, are the standards, and you will use the Ecuadorian standards. This uh, unit uses three standards, and they've unpacked them, and we'll talk about that to find out exactly what those standards want you to do. Here are the transfer goals. They have two of them, the ones they want for life, and then they have the enduring understandings, essential questions, knowledge, and skills. We're going to start with unpacking the standards. We're going to look at the knowledge and skills that come from those standards. And then in the next lecture, we'll look more at the understanding and essential questions. Okay, uh, this is a, a blank standard, so you can kind of see where it goes. Uh, what content standards and, um, and program or mission-related goals will this unit address? What is it you want to teach? What habits of mind and cross-disciplinary goals? In other words, you can also put in cross-disciplinary goals if you teach in a context that will allow you to teach uh, integrated kind of curriculum. Okay, standards. Select a group of standards that would be appropriate to teach together and that address the big idea of your unit. You should do that at this point early in the unit to have those standards so you know what you're aiming at. And then we're going to unpack them. How do we unpack a standard? What does that mean? We break it down so that we can see the 
all of the targets that are in that standard and what level they want it taught and under what conditions because that makes a big difference. Standards have a lot of information in them and so unpacking them takes them apart to make sure we understand all the information that's in that standard. We find out what content or skill is the focus of that standard. We look at how many objectives, specific contents or skills are included in the standard. How is the student supposed to demonstrate this knowledge and skills? And to what level of mastery? Now standards are written differently and every standard won't have all of this in it, but if it does have it in it, you need to pay attention.